mother today happens to be the day she I mean it's actually 25th. But uh, 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 uh we decided to celebrate you today. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And so today, uh can we just yeah. Yeah. to us. Yes. She's been a blessing to many. Yes. And she's Amen. still continuing being a blessing to the body of Christ. Yes. Amen. Let's just sing a happy birthday to her. Let's just sing a happy birthday to her. Maybe we're not getting time to do it. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Purposes. Altars are found in the shrines, temples, churches, and other places. We have an altar in the house. And so, an altar is a structure upon which offerings, such as sacrifices, are being made on. So, this altar we see here is a very, a very sensitive part in the church. Uh, it is not to be played with because the heart of the church is here. Amen. And so we have altars in every part, you know, in places where we worship. And um, how do I call it? There are altars in shrines. I mean, in that kingdom, there are altars there. When you come into the kingdom of God, there are altars there. There are two main types of altars. Uh, they are mainly the altar dedicated to the Lord or dedicated to the kingdom of uh, God and the altars dedicated to the kingdom of darkness. And these altars all require sacrifices and they all actively respond to the activities on the altar. In the olden days, 
or in the days of Abraham and uh, Noah and all uh, the patriarch, they, they they really they really uh, got themselves involved with the activities of the altar. Whenever God actually um, and, uh, appeared to any of them, whenever they appeared to them, the police they go there and build an altar and sacrifice on that portion of land or the place they did that place very holy so whenever they need to encounter God or speak to God again they go to that place and they do whatever they want to do there because they did that place holy Amen. so altars altars a very essential part in every place of worship. And um, when you come to the house of the Lord, our altar in the house speaks for God's children. The altar in the kingdom of God speaks for God's children. And God actively responds to the activities on this altar. So, in the same way, the devil also has its own artist, and they both want. He also listened to his worshippers' activities on the altar. Right. Yeah. So, um, the altar is a place where humans interact with divinity. The altar. It's a meeting place of divinity and humanity. The altar is a place of interaction. The altar is a place of communication with a divine being through sacrifice, through offering. So, We see the activities of the altar to be very important. In the days of Noah, you see, God really responds to the activities on the altar. In the days of Noah, the Bible says that after the flood, Noah built an altar unto the Lord and he made sacrifices on the altar. And uh, God smelled the sacrifice or the offering that was made on the altar and God said, ah, it has pleased him. And so the intent purpose of God for the generation ahead was altered because of the sacrifices that was placed on the altar of Noah. So the activity that Noah did on the altar uh, uh, pulled down the hand of God and uh, changed the course of events. So we see here that God actively responded to the activities on the altar. We see another example where the, uh, Elijah, Elijah, uh, Elijah and the prophet of Baal. We see the interaction between uh, Elijah and God. Where God, Elijah, um, yes. made the altar, repaired the altar of the Lord and made sacrifices on it. And the Bible says that God responded to his prayer after the altar and the sacrifice had been made on the altar, responded his prayer with what? Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we see here that God responds actively to the activities on this altar. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. The altar demands sacrifice. This altar we see here demands sacrifice. Oh, Jesus. The only language of this altar is sacrifice. And so, I mean, I'm not going to go to that. That's not my my my, uh, my, my where I'm going today. But yeah. I want to draw your attention to something. So, if you are in a church, if you are in a church, and your hand does not go on this altar, this altar will never be, it, it will never recognize you because the recognition part of this altar. Is sacrifice. It will make so that sacrifice, your sacrifice will go on. So the offering you give in a church goes on this altar spiritually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
the time to give goes on this altar spiritually. And it is because of the activity of the altar. That is why we have this here. This is the very powerful where I take every man of God. Where your source of what? Uh, how do I call it? Um, where you interact with God. Where you even claim divine what? Empowerment. Yes. In the old, in the old testament, before a, a, a priest would go into the holy of holies, he needs clearance before entering. This gives the man of God the access to the holy of holies. I don't know if you are touching the revelation, but without the altar, without the sacrifice on the altar, you cannot gain access to the presence of God. I'm not talking yeah. to someone. Yeah. 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 So, listen to me. That is why the people knew how to go about the sacrifices on the altar. That is why they built altar, even in the straight places, not only in the tabernacle, not only in the temple, but even in their houses, even in the very place that they built altar, because the altar rendered them what? Access to God's presence. Yes, yes. And so, when you are praying or shopping, and you come into the house of God, and you put a sacrifice, an offering on the altar, it gives you access. Yes. yes. It gives you divine access. Yes. Listen to me. The same way this thing works in the house of God, or in the kingdom of God, in the same way it works with the kingdom of darkness. Mm-hmm. Listen to me. Many of us sitting under the sound of our voice are going through some stuff that we don't understand. We've been praying about. We've been praying over the years and we don't get response. We don't get what the answers we are needing. And it's not everything that we do by prayer. There are times that you need to stop and think, Lord, is there anything I'm not doing? Ah, yes. yes. All right, man. All right. Because some of the things you pray about only needs a sacrifice on the altar uh-huh. to change the hand of God. But I'm taking you somewhere. So there are altars in our family. Everybody seated here. You were once in the world. And the Bible says that if you are not for me, then you are against me. So at once you were in the world. And so you were subjected to the altars of the of the king of darkness, uh, whether you know it or not, because right. you are not for God. Right. So you have yeah, not yeah. come into the light. Yeah. Okay? But there are still altars that you were you were under before mm-hmm. that you have not, though you have come to Christ, the altars are still there. Amen. It hasn't been broken. Uh, so amen. those altars will still be coming at you once in a while. They will be yeah. pestering you. They will be trying to exert their forces on you. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So, we read in uh, Judges chapter 6. That is where we're going to uh, do most of our reading from. Judges 6. And I'm reading. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of, of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. They did evil. So God delivered them into the house of Midian for seven good years. God took his covering out of the lives of the children of Israel and so they became vulnerable to the enemy because remember the enemy is always roaming looking for somebody who, who he can or who he can accept his what power on. And so imagine that God has taken a covering that protected them the divine immunity that protected the children of Israel from them. Now they are vulnerable. They don't have the power to defend themselves. So they were at the mercy of what? Their enemies for seven good years. And listen to me. They sinned. What did they do? They sinned. What was their sin? There was an altar that the father of Gideon raised in their house. 
And that altar was not an altar of the Lord, dedicated to the Lord. It was a different altar from the dark world kingdom that was dedicated to uh, uh, Baal. So, they said, the Bible says that in a period of time, Israel did not have no king. So they were living their lives anyhow. And so they were, they were just doing anything they want. And they ended up ignoring God and worshipping the, the, the gods that, that were in the land in which they possessed. So God was angry and, and so took the covering from them and said, okay, do what you want to do. And then the enemy came in and began to what? War against them. Began to do what he wanted to do to them. But remember what brought the, what brought all these things against them? It was the what? altar that was in the father's house. Yeah, all right. There were some of us sitting here that our ancestors went somewhere, did some things to secure something for the family and unknowingly brought curses to us. Most of us are sitting here wow. going through things that we did not do for ourselves. Amen. Things that we did not commit ourselves. Amen. But some family members somewhere, yeah. went somewhere, did something, and that effect is coming upon us because we are under the umbrella of the name. Yeah. Mm. Gosh, so okay. Gideon was under the umbrella of the, uh, of the father and the children of Israel because the God, uh, because the altar was in the, in the land of Israel, mm. The entire land was what? Contaminated. That is why the entire land was what? Judged. That is why the evil came upon everyone. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So the altar was in the house of what? George. See? And the altar determined the way the life of the child, the children of Israel, who believed. The altar determined that. They should not make it in life. The author determined that they should go hungry. All the days that have been prescribed for them by God, they should be suffering. They should live in fear. They should live in agony. That was the prescription or the, 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 the statute of the author that was there. Yeah. So there are some authors in our house, our, our, our family life, that determined that anybody in this family should not never make it. Yeah. They got, they went for the altar to protect the family. In my own family, my forefathers went for an altar to, to, to give the family long life. And they sacrificed, I believe, they were, when they went there, the, 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 the person that was in charge of the, of the, of the God or the altar I, I, I prescribed something that they should do. I believe they did it, okay? They did all the sacrifices they could do. They paid all the money they wanted. But that wasn't the exact thing the altar or the God demanded from my forefathers. Yeah. They will never, the devil will never tell you the truth of what you are doing. Yeah. He will always give you a, a, a lie. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So they went ahead, paid all the prices or whatever they did, and thinking they are going to get long life. The devil gave long life to the family. In my family, nobody, listen to me, my great my great grandfather was 125 years before he died. When he died, he was walking. He was very strong, like a like a hard work on it. Uh, that was it. My great my, my father, hey, my uh, excuse me, my, my grandmother also died one of uh, one of ten. Just recently. Wow. So, but when you come into the family, you can never marry one man, one woman. Mm. You can never have a child and stay with one man, one woman. You have to, in your lifetime, you have to marry over and over and over again. In my family, when you come, there is what we call poverty. You can never make it. No matter the kind of degrees, if you are lucky and you go to school, you acquire all the certificates you want, you can never work with a certificate. The certificate will be put somewhere and you'll be doing car wash. <laughs> that is my family for you. When you come in my family, yeah. the, the, the altar demands that you will die poor. In your old age, you will die poor. 
Whatever you work for, you can never account for it. The altar demands that nobody in the family will ever step a foot outside of Ghana. Listen to me. You are sitting under the sound of my voice today. There is an altar that is in your family that is determined, determining your, the bearing of your life. But today I came here as a prophet of God and I came with a fire to break that altar. Shall be broken. No, I can't even go to you. The altar is being set on fire. Yeah. Today, that altar is being set on fire. Yeah. I had no idea of the altar, but because Thank I was born into it, I automatically came under the altar. Well, so everybody, normally or normally, there was something in your bloodline. That is why most of us going through some same sickness. If you look into your bloodline, wow. there will be same sickness. Amen. There was an altar fight in the family. Amen. Yesterday, was it yesterday, babe? I called a woman. A woman called me. And I began to profess to the woman. I told her her bloodline. I began to go deep. And I said, I see all of your family members' rings buried in, the, in an altar. And that means that none of your family has been married before. She said, yes. So the altar has not every family member's one. Rain. Your marriage is in the altar. Jesus. Until you break the altar, yeah. you can never be able to make it. Yeah. 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 So here, listen to me. The children of Israel were going through certain things because of what they did. The Bible says in Judges uh, chapter uh, 6, verse 3. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Medianite came up, and the Amalekite, and the children of the east, even they came up against them, and they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth, till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. So they make sure they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are in poverty. All right. It was the same altar that kindled the enemy against them. Uh-huh. So the children of Israel were going through certain things that they did not find it comfortable. They could not even eat well. They were afraid of these people, according to the Bible. And verses 4 says, And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth. So, okay. All right. The five. For they came out with their cattle and their tents. And they gave us grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. Their main purpose is to destroy what you have, your destiny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's to destroy what God has called you to do. Make sure they put hindrance, make sure they put blockings, make sure they put embargoes on your life in order to not what accomplish what God has right. called you to do. That is what the evil altar is there to do. So, the Bible says this in provision because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel (coughs) which said unto them that said the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of body and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drove them out from before you and gave you the alarm. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of this Amorite in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. So here the children of Israel were crying out for deliverance because they were being oppressed. They were running to caves, mountains because of the fear of the enemy. And so they became so frustrated that they began to cry out to the Lord. And the Lord said, send a prophet to them. You know, whatever God is about to do something in Uh one's life, 
Whenever God is about to do something in a city's life, in a life of an individual, he always reveals his secret to his servant, the prophet. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. And the Bible declares that by the hand of the prophet, Israel was delivered. And the servant of the prophet, Israel was preserved. So whenever God is getting ready to do something new in your life, which I feel God is about to do something new in somebody's life today, in the name of Jesus, I see, you know, God doing something new in somebody's life today. And by the declaration of the word from the Lord, your life will be shifted today in Jesus' name. So he sent a prophet unto them to bring them into the uh, into the light of what they have done and say okay look you did that 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 and so i, I came again i took my covering from you that was the beginning process but they cried out to the lord and the bible says he sent a prophet to them and so from that encounter when you go on uh, the lord is part an angel to encounter uh, Gideon, the man Gideon, uh, in his father's land, where the father, you know, they, they have their wine press and all those things going on there. And he was actually uh, 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 doing wheat, harvesting wheat in a place where they're supposed to do wine because of the fear of the enemy. He was hiding it. Fine. So he encountered an angel, and the angel said, Ah, you are mighty man, uh, you are mighty. Uh, 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 a man of valor mm. and uh, so on and so forth and then and then according to the conversation Gideon said ah if I'm a mighty man in valor why is my people you know suffering if uh, we've heard of the of the stories of the God of my father they did great things so why 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 is he why why are we suffering so the Bible says after that encounter he realized he didn't know whom he was talking to. But he realized afterwards that it was an angel of the Lord. He made a sacrifice to him after that. He knew that it was an, an angel of the Lord. And uh, uh, he was afraid to die. And so uh, 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 the Lord spoke to him again and said, Don't, Do not be afraid. You will not die. Peace. And so he made an altar there and sacrificed on the altar. And, and the Bible says that very same night, the Lord appeared to him and began to talk to him about uh, the process of the deliverance. The process. So the Lord told him that look, there is an altar in your father's house. Before I can go ahead and move you out of what you are going through, I feel the Holy Ghost. Before I can move you out of the out of what you are going through, I need you to go into your father's house. Break that altar, and in place of that altar, build another altar for me, yeah. and yeah. sacrifice a bullock of seventy years. Yeah. Seventy is a number of rest. But in order for me to 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 to, to bring deliverance to you, break that altar. That is distracting. Right. That is preventing. Right. Oh my God! Oh my God. Yes. Yes. So the Bible says, Gideon entered and did exactly what. God has instructed him to do with 10 men. And that began the delivery process. But watch this. The entire nation, the destiny of, of Israel was being hindered. Nobody under the, under the influence of that altar was able to fulfill his destiny at that, oh my God. Because the altar was frustrating their destiny. Nobody, they had, all of them had destinies to leave. They had great things, ambitions to do. But the altar restricted them. Gideon was a mighty man of valor. He was a deliverer. But so far as he was under the altar, he was under the curse of the altar, he could not be that deliverer until that altar was broken before his dream, before his real identity came out. There is somebody sitting under the sound of my voice. There is an altar speaking against you. There is an evil altar speaking against you. Making sure that your destiny, you will never leave your destiny. Making sure that what God has called you to do, you will never fulfill it. But I came to declare unto you, God is giving you deliverance. God is deliverance. In the name of Jesus. So, 
Wow. Just like my family, the altar there determined that nobody in the family will be able to leave his purpose. All right. You'll become a drug guy, give you false identity, and so on and so forth. Jesus. Until the altar is being broken. Yes. We cannot come out. Yes. So Gideon broke the altar. And according to the Bible, he did a series of things, and the Lord gave him the deliverance he needed. Gave him and the, and the Israel and the deliverance they needed. Yeah. He delivered them with a few, oh, few numbers. Yeah. Only 300 members. Yeah. And remember, there were multitudes that were after, after them. Yeah. But the Lord delivered the entire Israel by the hand of what? Gideon with 300 what? Men. He didn't want to take, he didn't want anybody to take the glory. God is somebody seated here. God wants to use you out of your family to break that curse that is there. I don't know what is fighting against you in your family. I don't know, but some families, there are sicknesses that are being inherited. There are things that are being inherited. And God wants to use you as a kingdom in your family to break the curse. I don't know who I'm talking to, but if you can gather yourself and come out of your fear, God will use you Amen. to break that altar. Jesus. So, the altar was broken. The altar was broken. And when the altar broke, they got the deliverance. They uh, Jesus. Listen to me. And it's not hard for God to do. Mm-hmm. What the altar needed was a seven-year-old bull. The altar that he built, he destroyed the evil altar. And when he destroyed the evil altar, God instructed him to build another altar unto the Lord and yeah. sacrifice on the altar. Listen to me. Altars need sacrifice. Burnt sacrifice. He said, do a burnt sacrifice when the, when the seven-year-old old bull. The seven means rest. So God was giving them rest from their enemies. Amen. And so he sacrificed. I want you to take see. It is not every sacrifice that God has sent. Amen. Cain and Abel went to sacrifice. But one of them, the sacrifice, his sacrifice was ignored, was not accepted. Just because it wasn't a sacrifice. Though he sacrificed, but it wasn't a sacrifice. Abel's sacrifice was accepted. Listen to me. Let me show you something. Yeah. Let's go to um, 2 Samuel chapter 24. Yeah. 2 Samuel chapter 24. Uh, let's read from the... Alright, the 17. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But did she, what have they done? Let thy hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. And uh, 18, and God came that day to David and said unto him, Go up rare and altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. And David, according to, I'm reading all from uh, that, that's uh, 17 downwards. And David, according to the saying of God, went up as the Lord commanded. And Aruna looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Aruna went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And Aruna said, Wherefore is my Lord the king come to his servant? And David said to buy the threshing floor of Obi to build an altar unto the Lord that the blood may be stayed from the people. And Aruna said unto David, Let my Lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here be oxen for burnt sacrifice, and threshing instrument, and other instrument of the oxen for wood. 23. All these things did Aruna. As, as a king, give unto the king. And Aruna 
said unto the king, The Lord thy God has said thee. And listen, pay very good attention here. 24. And the king said unto Aruna, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings at my Korahaba unto the Lord my God of that which does not of that which that uh, do cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the auction for 50 shekels of silver. 25. And David built the altar, built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was interested, hey, was entreated for the land, and the plot was stayed from Israel. Amen. So not every sacrifice is a sacrifice. Jesus. Jesus. He went right. to build an altar there. The person that the land belongs to said, I am giving it for you for free because you are a king. I am under you. I am giving you everything you need for the burnt offering and every sacrifice. Free. Take it. Mm -hmm. But David said something profound. I am not going to do anything for my God that does not cost me. Amen. It does not cost you, it's not a sacrifice. Many of you are sitting under the sound of my voice. You've been praying about something that you are fighting, you are fighting with. And maybe you may be you may be putting off for a time and things are not what going right. I, I ask you, does the, does the offering you give does it cost you? Is it a sacrifice? Uh, come on. Because your hand could go on this altar. But God is not accepting your offering yeah. on the altar. Yes. Come on. Come on. And when God does not accept, you have a problem. Yeah. So, listen to me. There are things that we need to break away from. And I want to come to the premise of my, of my message. We need to build an altar and sacrifice on the altar to break the, oh my God, the evil altar that is battling against us. Yeah. There is an altar in my heart that I want to break. That is limiting me from accessing the fullness of God in me. And I want to break that altar. But the only way I can break that altar is by raising another altar unto the Lord. And push that altar away. And sacrifice on the altar of the Lord. And break that altar. And get my deliverance. Altars only respond to altar. The language which an altar understand is a, a language of an altar. Your sacrifice may be using yourself, serving in the house of the Lord. Because the burnt offering, they offer the entire animal. Which means right. you are the, the person that is sacrificed or giving the sacrifice is sacrifices his whole whole yes. being right. and everything that he has, yes. everything yes. unto the Lord. Yes. So there are things that we need to do in order to break free. Prayer alone can't break the altar. We've been praying for too long. And we need sacrifices yes. to go on the altar of the Lord. To break the altar yes. that is fighting against us. If we could do that, God will respond by fire. Exactly. Every altar fighting against you, God will respond by fire. Amen. And I want us to rise up. Please, let's rise. Amen. Let's rise. The only way. We can break that curse we are going through is by altering the altar and breaking the curse. You can't break the curse. You can't break the curse while, while the altar still exists. And that is what most of us are doing. We are actually breaking the curse and we leave in the altar. And so the, 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 the thing goes for a minute, a season, and it comes back to us. Because the main causative organism is still there. I want just to pray. We are saying this. I want everybody to be very serious with this prayer. Father, any or every altar in my father's life, in my mother's life, as I raise up prayer today, let the fire of the Holy Spirit arrest that altar and 
destroy that altar. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Just 
thing God is going to bring you out of what you are doing, probably in your lives. And they bring the cash, just come and put it down. Uh, and it's going to usher you guys into full time. You will do the work of God. Yeah, you will do the work of God. And you are going to teach the word like never before. You are going to teach the word and prophecy just yeah. as I'm doing. And so prepare.
uh, you are going to enter into full-time ministry. Mm -hmm. Okay, this I already know. Okay, fine, fine. Um, God is going to use you mightily because of your love for God. I don't know, but God is bringing you out of your family. In your family, is there a pastor in your family? No. Is there anybody? Oh, Jesus. All right, let me just say this up front. God is raising you out of your family to break every curse in your family. You are like a Joseph to your family. You are like a Gideon to your family. You may be a woman, but you carry the ability of a man. The Lord said, your husband, you and your husband both, you are not married now, right? Will do the work of God. Don't worry about the future because it's got you. It's got you. It's got, it's got everything lined up. So the Lord said to tell you that you are at the right place and at the right time in where you are. And it's going to use you to break that cash. Ah, please, where is your father? He passed away. Oh, Jesus. Time is up. Do not worry, okay? He said to tell you it's like a father to you. It's like a father to you. And I'm seeing your father in heaven. Seen your father in heaven. The Lord is going to use you. The Lord is going to use you in a very powerful way. I'm seeing bringing a lot of joy to young adults. I'm seeing organizing conferences, prophetic conferences. Are you prophetic? But I'm seeing gathering prophetic conferences. Yeah, I'm seeing God in prophetic conferences. Uh, mm -hmm. yes, I'm going to time is now. How many are you? Am I six weeks? Yeah. It's a total of eight. How many? Eight. You guys are eight. Bringing another one. I'm, I'm seeing. I'm seeing another uh, uh, one of you, your siblings, mm. also doing what you are doing. Why? How are you? Why? <laughs> All right. Okay. You know what? But I'm seeing another man. I'm seeing another man. I don't know whether when your your father died, whether your mother remarried again. Oh, was with another person. No? Okay. Because I've seen another man. I've seen another man. Anyway, I am praying that whatever God, the purpose God has for you, will be made manifest. But I want you to know that God loves you so much. Uh, there is a prayer you've prayed, okay? Even last, last night. And the Lord said to tell you that he's heard that prayer and he's answering that prayer. All right. Yeah. I know. Anyway. I pray for you, woman. I pray for you. May the hand of God rest upon you. And may God bless you and use you for his purpose. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. We thank the Lord for what He's done. Just open your mouth and thank Him. Sing. Thank you. Thank you.